Reading a card doesn't tell you how good the card is, and the Black Goat Laughs is a prime example of this. I want to talk about this today because I think it's an important consideration to keep in mind, but I also very frequently do tell people to read cards, or you know, I'll ask them if they read a card, or I'll tell them to reread a card. And the reason I do this is because I want them to look at the effect, make sure they have the comprehension of it, and I want them to think about it. I'm not doing it just so they look at the effect and try to make a judgment from the effect, right? I, I want there to be that depth of an analysis. Because even looking at this, the Black Goat Laughs on paper has two really strong effects. The first one says, declare one monster card name this turn. Neither player can special summon monsters with that original name except from the graveyard. Okay, this is potentially really strong because I can keep my opponent off of extra deck stuff, right? But if you blindly call something in the extra deck and your opponent has the tools in their hand to do something else then this card ended up like not necessarily doing a whole lot. Sure, it stopped them from going into the card you were concerned about, but exactly how much that matters depends on the situation. So let, let's think about it like this. Your opponent goes into Selene. You've waited, you flip this, you call access code, and then they go into Ambula Well or Ambula Well. In that instance, you made the correct call. They pivoted to something that could not necessarily OTK you or clear your board out. You're in a much better position than you would have been otherwise, right? But let's say you're playing against Exosister and you call out Magnificent. Exosister can just go for a different line that allows them to make the Magnifica on your turn, still getting a search off of Caspatel or Mikhailis, potentially both. If you call the Caspatel or the Mikhailis, they can just go for one of the other cards and potentially still go into Magnifica. Like, this card requires a depth of understanding of the decks that you're playing against, and it requires you to pay attention quite heavily to what resources they have available to themselves. And then you look at the second effect. It says you can banish this card from the graveyard, then declare one monster card name. This turn, neither player can activate the effects of monsters on the field with that original name. And again, this is a pretty strong effect. It gives you insulation, it gives you some freedom to potentially interact with your opponent when you may otherwise struggle to do so. Like if your opponent is on a noir that has a bunch of materials, now they can no longer repeatedly bounce your cards to the bot deck. So you can actually develop your board and potentially play into it. But it doesn't solve the fact that noir may be too big for you to swing over. You'd still have to do something like using a scare cache to negate its effects. Dropping the stat bonuses... And allowing you to swing over it. Like, make no mistake, I think this card is a very good utility piece, but in terms of generic usability, this isn't something that I think would get slotted into all that many decks. By comparison, Iron Thunder is effectively extra copies of Solemn Judgment with some caveats. The main two being, Solemn Judgment can negate spells and traps that are activated in the graveyard because it doesn't really care about where the effect is being activated from. And Iron Thunder pops everything in the column of the card it negates. Now, this can be a positive or a negative. You can actually use this to remove opponent's cards in a column that you really want to get rid of, right? So, like, even though your opponent can potentially try to play around Iron Thunder by summoning to these same zones that your cards are in, right? It's something that is kind of very easily mitigatable, just in a general scope, because if you're running either Judgment or Iron Thunder, they're supplements to your board. They're not necessarily the main thing that you want to go for. Yeah. So just looking at the card, yes, it has a potential downside. You destroy your own cards, you lose your resources, and maybe that causes you to lose the grind game. But there are so many cards that are generic that gain value when they're destroyed. Or if your cards are destroyed by any means, they'll trigger in the graveyard or potentially your hand. Right. And this is providing a utility there that not only can you negate your opponent's stuff, but you can potentially trigger each of those effects. Alongside this, you don't have to use this card in response to your opponent doing something. You can summon your own card or activate your own card in a column that your opponent has heavily occupied. Flip this to negate your card and wipe everything in that column. The fact it's a counter trap also means that unless your opponent also has a counter trap, they wouldn't be able to respond to this because it's spell speed three. Just overall, there's a lot of things to consider when you're evaluating a card, 
And I think this one is easily just like really, really good, but not at the level where it's necessarily a staple. I would say like, it's not exactly comparable to Kurikara, but it's a similar situation where I expect this thing to be like 10, 15 bucks. And then when somebody starts topping with it, it's going to shoot up to like 50. That's just me though. I could be wrong. If I'm proven wrong, you know, I'll take that. Uh, but I, I genuinely think this card is super duper interesting. Also, because like you have themes that like I can, I can use Scareclaw as an example, right? Scareclaw has Defanging and they have Arrival. Defanging protects your Scareclaw Link Monsters and Beasts of Starfrost from destruction and targeting by your opponent's effects, right? Arrival just protects from destruction. So if you were to summon something to the zone that your opponent has a tryhard in while they have, you know, their defanging out. And you want to kill the tryhard, you know they have Iron Thunder in their deck, or maybe you know they just searched it out or whatever and set it. So you activate a spell, trap, or monster effect in the same column as their tryhard in an attempt to destroy it because they'd be destroying it with their own card, right? They negate your card and then they banish the arrival from the graveyard, protecting their tryhard from destruction by their own effect. Now what? Right? Like, I'm not trying to suggest that this is a super amazing slot into every single deck card. I just think that when people have made judgments about it, the evaluation was based off of the card's text and not how that text necessarily fits into the game on a more macro scale, if that makes sense.